Well, hello, viewing audience. This is The Life, and we are located in Redford, Michigan. I am Bishop Harold Duncan, and we are delighted that you've decided to tune in. Here at The Life, we believe in the total uh, unerring Word of God. So get ready for an amazing Word. Sit back, relax, whatever you may be doing, and enjoy the Word. And we'll be back shortly after the conclusion of the Word. Come on and put your hands together. Give the Lord the absolute best clap that you can because you love him and because he has redeemed you from destruction. Hallelujah. All right, let, let me read our scripture so I can be free to move how the Holy Spirit move, uh, wants to move. There's a phrase to a song that, that says these words. We are changed when you move in our midst. I want you to capture that. Turn your Bibles to uh, Matthew 18, 18. We are changed when you, meaning God, move in our midst. If what has taken place so far has not changed you to some degree, it could only mean that you are resistant to what he was doing. That's the, only, that's the only explanation for it. Uh, do you have uh, Matthew 18? Help me out while I'm talking. Praise God. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall uh, have been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Next verse. Again I say. To you that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask it shall be done for them by my father who is in heaven next verse for where two or three have gathered together in my name I am there in their midst now find for me Amos chapter 3 verse 3 Amos chapter 3 verse 3 and and we'll go from there. Praise God. I'll tell you how the God spot thing came up yesterday. And I will, I will incorporate to some extent uh, what took place here yesterday. Because it, it, is, it is critical. Uh, Amos 3.3. 3, do, do two men walk together unless they have an appointment. I don't know what version that is. Okay, NASB. And, and you know it from King James. If, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? We know that. Amen. All right. So um, before I really de delve any deeper into this, yesterday, and, and really what I call myself attempting to do strategically, uh, let me prophetically, so I'm, I'm ministering to some extent prophetically. Everybody okay with that? And here's what I mean prophetically. I, I am hearing what heaven is saying in this moment. Uh, regardless of the notes that I have written out. And, and I'll, I'll use part of those notes. But uh, please understand, uh, the most important thing you can understand is, is what is the DNA of your house? Okay. Know the DNA of your house. And if you, because if you don't know the DNA of your house, number one, it's hard to be in alignment. Because God will do things, and because you don't understand the DNA of your house, and let me give it to you this way to simplify it for some of you know your personality. So uh, know how you are wired. Okay, so uh, every person in this room is wired in a certain fashion. We talked a little bit yesterday about temperaments, uh, differences, and so forth. Uh, and so when we don't know the DNA of the house, and I'll use a strong word, and I want to emphasize this word, that we are joined to. So, so the way you see a local ministry is 
as a member, you are married to that house. I, 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 that's two people. <laughs> I need a little more amen. amen. Just a little more Jesus. And, and, and when you become married to a house, let me just ask this question, put this in your brain. What's up with divorcing us? See, see the church has to step into a dimension of revelation that will enable us to transform communities, cities, nations. Let me just plainly tell you this. God is literally after the nations. Let me tell you this in case you didn't know it. God ain't prejudiced. Irregardless of, of uh, the failures of men based on our sin nature to dislike one another, God loves us all. There's all kind of conflict taking place in the, the earthly realm. And as we watch it, you can really get disturbed with other ethnic groups. But even in that, even if they're involved in, okay, Holy Spirit, I'll say it, war crimes. God still love them. And he wants peace on earth. That's what he wants. So, so as a house, it becomes my responsibility to help us Understand and walk in our DNA. And the, the problem with that is I didn't pick it. Look at your neighbor and say, say to your neighbor, did you hear that? God picked the DNA of this church. He picked it. He chose it. Before the foundations of the world, before we were born, uh, before the earth was created, Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. That word knew is an intimate word. Everything that the life will execute and even the things that we may miss, God already knows that. But in order for us to transform a community, there has to be a transformed people. And what I'm saying to you is that is the challenge for the church because we know how to do church. Everybody in here know how to do church. Even if you don't dance, you know how to do church. We're really good at doing church. But the question that the Holy Spirit raises to us in this moment, and, I'll, and I'll, I will tell you about the God spot. The, the, the question that he raises is this. When will we do kingdom? When will we shift the paradigm and, and literally step into the apostolic prophetic model that started with Jesus. So, so newsflash, if you've never heard it, here it is again, and I'll figure out how to spend time dealing with this because it is important. Uh, the DNA of this house is apostolic and prophetic. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, we are apostolic and prophetic. Even if we ain't functioning in it. God's not going to change it. God's not going to say, okay, since y'all won't do it, I'll change it. Do something that you're comfortable with. 
I'll be honest with you. I, I, I have not always been comfortable with the apostolic. I haven't. I mean, I wrestled with God about that. Years ago, I wrestled. I'm like, God, are you, you know, what's up with this? Simply because I understood the dimension of that, 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 that function. And, and, and so God, this is what God told me years ago. God said to me, I was at home. He said, you wouldn't even be thinking apostolic if I didn't put it in your mind. So guess what I did? Shut up. Now, let me start to understand. Let me start to research. Let me start to gather with other apostles and prophets. Let me gather with them and sit under them so that I can understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Yesterday was phenomenal. It was an amazing time. Uh, it, we started this out. I decided during the course of the week to... Uh, not do the, the, the midweek uh, session. We call it our deeper life session in the midweek. And the reason for that is that Pastor Josh contacted me a couple of weeks ago uh, and said, Bishop, uh, can we redo and restart the spiritual gift session? And, and I said, okay. So I moved some things around. Uh, and, and, and the reason I moved it around, because here is the challenge that we face with respect to being trained in the things of God. Is it all right if I share that? We, we face challenges uh, to be trained in the things of God because our schedules are overbooked. I'll use a word it, 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 to me, we just busy. We got so much going on, and, and I get it. I, I do recognize the necessity of having to deal with your children, uh, perhaps your job, and all the things that you wrestle with, and then you just want some time for yourself. And so the question is, how do we equip a church that has no time to be equipped? It should never be the case that a senior man that runs a house must beg the members of that body to come to service. This is a good thing. It's a good thing that God gave us the freedom of will. It's an amazing thing that God says, I don't want you to serve me out of forced action. I want you to serve me because you, you love me because I have shown you how much I love you. How many people here you, you ex have experienced the love of God? And how many people, and I'm going to start myself, I'll be the first person to tell you that from the moment I got saved at the age of 12 up until this very present moment, there have been times in my life where I really wasn't focusing on God. It was about me. Where are you? Everybody in this room has had some about me moments. And so, so what God has essentially done with respect to communities is this he plants a ministry in a community because he's after that community check this out it's kind of like this R remember when Israel came into the promised land and the first land that they took was supposed to be a tithe to God that's what this is with God God says I want to take this land I want this community now I got to put some people in there to take it Because I'm not coming down and do for them what, I want, what, what they should be doing for themselves. So I'm going to drop a community of believers. I'm going to take a body of believers and drop them in a community where there is no God or trinkles of God because I want to transform it. And what I'm going to do is 
You just got to grab what I'm saying. What I'm going to do is that one day I'm going to come back and get all my stuff. But I ain't going to tell them when I'm coming back. I'm just going to show up. And I'm going to meet him in the cloud. And as the verse says, so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, so we canceled midweek and we pushed it to Saturday. And, and I think I had a note, uh, uh, a text alert come out to say, hey, we're going to cancel midweek and we're going to do Saturday. It's open to everybody. <laughs> I'm going to say this and I, I ain't trying to hurt y'all, but I'm just going to tell it like it. T- t- at least people who are in the leadership, if they weren't working, should have made that meeting. I'm just saying. We covered spiritual gifts, and check this out. We did, we did prophetic activation yesterday. Okay, uh, if, you, if you're here this morning and you, you were in that meeting, stand up. Let me just see, where, where are you, if you were here? Okay, so look at the folk that's down. Okay, so look way, you see, you see Javion way back there? See him over there? Guess what he was doing yesterday? Y'all can sit down. Prophesying. Am, am I right? We did prophetic activation. And let me just stick this with this before I get to the God spot because there's a lot of stuff. It's kind of I'm trying to say, Lord, slow down a little bit because I can't keep up with you. So, so God gave the body gifts for two reasons, y'all. Only two reasons. And while I'm talking about this, think about what gift he gave you. And if you don't know, we need to discover, you need to discover what he gave you. The first order of spiritual gifts is so that we can build up each other. We are too busy tearing each other down. Feuding and fussing over stuff that really don't even matter to God. All of which is the product of selfishness. But we're supposed to use the gifts of God to help build each other up. So so the person who has the gift of uh, mercy, how many people in this room, you know you need the mercy of God? Right? Right? So essentially what God did is he is a God of mercy, but he said, I'm going to put that in, I'm going to give that gift to somebody in the body so that when other members in the body need it, they don't just have me, they'll have them as well. You know why? Because some people have a difficult time really connecting with spirit. So we got to really work at connecting with spirit. Come on, touch yourself. I am a spirit. I live in a body, and I have a soul. So I'm looking at Tracy Webb, but in the natural, what I don't see is I don't see her spirit. Well, how do I see her spirit? I look for fruit. Tell your neighbor this. Tell your neighbor this real quick. Tell tell him, you need more fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love and its various characteristics. So what what Paul is saying to us in Galatians, he's saying the fruit of the Spirit is love, but here's what love looks like. He don't want us confused. So uh, yesterday, I'm not even sure how we got to that spot, but before I tell you that, Pastor Josh walked up to me Uh, while we were in that moment where we were praying for one another and said to me, the Holy Spirit just told me, this is what you said yesterday. Yesterday I mentioned about healing. Out of left field, our focus was on prophetic activation. But in a moment I said something about healing and then Josh came behind me and said, the Holy Spirit just told me this is what you said yesterday. Prophetic. I spoke something yesterday. And, 
and not even thinking, Elder Howard, about how the service is going to go. I always pray over the service, and you should too. You should always pray uh, that the, the presence and power of Jesus would manifest itself in a greater dimension when we come together. That's the prayer. And then let God have his way. And so Elder Howard moved into this place where you started talking about healing. Raise your hand if you need to be healed. I think that's how you said it. Something like that, yeah. And, and the Holy Spirit in me prompted me, said, hey, let's catch this spot right here. See, when you're when you, when you a spirit, you know how to catch the God spot. That was the spot. Because whenever we come together, God already knows what everybody needs. All he needs is a cooperative people, a, a, a sensitive people, a people of awareness, uh, a prepared people. So what I'm saying to you is on your Saturday, when you're closing out your Saturday, start to prep yourself for Sunday. In fact, I don't wait for Saturday. I have to be prepping all week. So, so we were talking, and then somehow I, I said, don't know what prompted it, but I said, uh, I announced to the class that my father died yesterday morning. So I'm in bed. Pastor Alicia's in North Carolina uh, preaching for Pastor Alice. And uh, so my phone rings, and I'm thinking it's her. You know, it's about 7.30. I'm thinking it's, 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 it's Pastor Alicia calling, waking me up. And I answered the phone, it's my sister. And she said, Harold. I said, yeah, she said, Dad just died. And, and I'm not saying this for people to feel sorry for me. You all know, if you know me, I don't live in that. I don't live in the realm of sympathy. Encouragement is cool. You can encourage me, that kind of thing. Pray for me, pray for my, all oh, that's good. But I'm not doing this because my conviction now more than ever before in my life is that everything God is doing or, or everything that's happening around me somehow is for his glory. Amen. I may not see it, but it's for his glory. So even in my dad's death, it's for his glory. I guess this is the way God want to go today. So he said, forget that. Okay, fine. So you know I've been going back and forth to Los Angeles. The intent is to get my father retired and put the church in a place where it can press into his future. And I'll tell you this, it's been very, very difficult. It's been combative. I'm just being transparent. Transparency is always better than just saying something and covering it up. It's always better to be transparent. I'm being transparent. There's no disrespect to any person except, but this has been my experience. So I go there and I'll tell you the honest to God truth. They have done everything against me other than just flat out cuss me to my face and cut me with a knife. See, sometimes y'all don't know what we deal with. In fact, in, in one meeting, somebody stood up and said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm here because my father told me to come here. And I said, and as long as my father say come, you might as well deal with it. I'm coming. That's my father. We got all these other preachers in California that can help us. Da, 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 da. No, that's my dad. And if I needed you, and I called you, and I needed you, and if I picked up my phone, I don't care who you are in this church where you're sitting, even if you ain't here this morning, the, the, the question is, will you respond to need? It ain't about want, it's need. My dad needed me. So we had to work through some stuff. And, and, and my conclusion then was that y'all just don't know who y'all messing with. I ain't scared of nobody here. In fact, they even thought 
that I was coming to pastor that church. And my sister in Texas called her mom and said, are y'all crazy? Do you know what he has in Detroit compared to what's out here? This is the real, this is the reality. See, because not all spiritual warfare is outside of the building of a church. Sometimes the worst fight you have is with the members of a church. And instead of them working on being transformed, they stuck in the flesh. And when you get stuck in the flesh, it is absolutely impossible for you to get revelation. Let me say it this way, or spiritual food. Which means your, your spirit is at stake when you can't handle spiritual food. Paul says, I, I, could, I could teach you something, but y'all acting like babies and I can't tell y'all this. Same thing Jesus went through. I have many more things to say to you, but you ain't ready. I just talked to my father Thursday and my sister too because she came to prayer. We sat back there and was talking about our dad. This is Thursday. And, and he called me to get an update because we were planning his retirement celebration and we were going to do a grand thing. We, we're not going to just throw something together. We don't, we don't, and, and you have folk out there just want to throw something together. No. Me and my aunt said, no, that ain't happening. It's going to be a celebration of excellence. And so I said, Dad, without giving you all the details, I said, Dad, the paperwork is almost finished. I said, and we'll look towards August, September to set the celebration. All right, son. My dad would do stuff like this. He, he, he would call me on a given day, Harold, <laughs> what you doing? Oh, I'm at work. How you doing? I'm fine. You fine? Yeah, y'all fine? Yeah, we fine. Okay, talk to you later. <laughs> and, and, and what I begin to understand now that I'm processing his transition is he just wanted to hear my voice. That's all he wanted. It, it wasn't no lengthy conversation. We went on the phone for hours. He just wanted to hear my voice. And every now and then he called me with a question. Hey, I got a question for you. Explain this to me. And the joy that I have is that I was able in his, his later years to go to Los Angeles and spend time with him. And, and when I would go and we would be at the house, you talking about my father having fun like a big kid. You ain't never seen nothing like it. Quick story, because I'm coming to the God spot. Ask your neighbor, find your God. No, tell him this, find your God spot. So uh, my dad needed some PJs. So uh, my Aunt Rose, that's my road dog. So when I go to L.A., you know, me and her be in the car, we be everywhere. We be all over the place. So we said, okay, we're going to go to the mall and get him some PJs. So I went to J.C. Penney's, went in, picked him out a, some, a pair of pajamas, bought him a robe, took it back to the house. And when I got back to the house, it probably was something like 3 in the afternoon. Tell me he didn't go in the bedroom and put all his stuff on. And because we had this kind of relationship, I said, hey, bro, you know what time it is? <laughs> so in the midst of this class yesterday on spiritual gifts, somehow I was led to tell the class that my father had transitioned, that he had passed away. And, and, and what I said to them was this. I said, here is how you got to process life going forward. This is for everybody. No matter what takes place in your life, no matter what challenge you run into, no matter what difficulty you, you run into, how bad you may think it be, find the God spot. So when I hung up the phone with my sister, I started looking for the God spot. Because check this out, had I focused on the members at that church, that's how the devil get us. He, he causes us to focus on the wrong thing. Tell your neighbor this, there is a God spot in every situation pertaining to your life. You just got to find it. Excuse me. 
So, so my sensing is this. My sensing is that uh, Abundant Life Christians is the life we have entered a new season. Okay? Look at your neighbor to your left, right, tell him we're in a new season. It's a new season. And, and here's the thing about a new season. We know from the natural seasons that seasons do change, right? We are coming out of winter, right? And we're going into what? We are already in it, but what is it called? It's spring. So now, as the temperature rises, catch this now, and it gets warmer. When it gets to be 65 degrees, and you come out the house with your winter coat on, there is a high probability that there is cognitively something wrong with you. So, so when, when, a, when a spiritual leader makes a communication about something changing, something different, etc., it becomes the responsibility of the body to stay in alignment with what's been announced. And so what we ought to be doing as members with one another is, is reminding each other. When we see old stuff, hey, wait, 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 this is a new season. See, because... Uh, the thing that you continue to affirm is the thing that will prevent you from pressing into your destiny. So, so our affirmations are just like alignments. Let me give you a simple example. We know this. I'm sick. Now, we know people don't feel well, et cetera. There are moments when I don't feel well, but I don't say I'm sick. I never say to pastors, I'm sick. See, see, see I'm reversing that thing because I want to be aligned with what God is saying. So I say, I'm getting healed. I'm, I'm taking on healing. We, we hear each other sniffle, and I'd be like, no, girl, you healed. The devil is a lie. Now, you got to do your part with taking care of yourself. But you must be careful. We must be careful with the things that we align ourselves with. So if, if, if we're going to transform a community, we need to be equipped. You got to think about, you know, what has God given me to do? Watch this. To your, with your church and with the community. Uh, somehow, church, we have got to recapture this. Go ye, or go you, or go we. It's gotten lost. Watch this, and I'm going to tell you who's been killing it. The religious spirit. The spirit of religion has killed go ye. And it ain't dead. I'm saying that wrong. But we've gotten so caught up in church that we, we, we're missing harvest. Yes, sir. You know, in Isaiah, God said, I will give you the nations as your inheritance. Yes. Anybody ever read that? Anybody? anybody? Yes. I will give you the nations of the, uh, as your inheritance. So God wants to give us stuff but he needs us to work with him. We have to do something. So the, the, the DNA of our ministry is apostolic. One thing I know I can do is I can look at the foundation of a church and tell you where the cracks are. And say, this, we need repair here. And we should never be opposed to repair. Uh, think about our city. Our city is under construction. And we happy. I'm tired of running into them potholes. How many people have dealt with cracked rims? My last car, 
My rims was cracked so much. The last time I took it to the guy to fix it, he said, ain't no hope for this. I had to buy four new rims because of the neglect of the city. It needed repair. And so what we need to be pressing into in this hour is we need to be focusing on being repaired on the inner man and the inner woman. We need to lock into that. We need to find a way that we can continue to grow, mature in the things of God, and then what we gain in here, take it out there. That's what we really need to do. Here's a statement for you. Only a church that is effectively fulfilling its God-given purpose can effectively minister to the needs of its community and membership. It's about effect. How effective are we? Let me just start in here. How effective are we with one another? Let's look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, how have you helped me? Let's ask them, how have you helped me? Yeah. When one is down, one should, another should be up. I mean, you know, uh, the scripture tells us that. A threefold cord is not easily broken. So we're supposed to be one big cord. And, and we have to, and I do this, but I'm recommending we all do this. We have to pray over our prejudices. Let me just tell you this. Prejudice is not just ethnicity. It ain't necessarily just about another nationality. We are prejudiced because we don't like each other. We, we see something in somebody else, watch this, that God wired differently. And here's our problem. You don't like that person, you go to God and say, God, I don't like this person. Why did you make them? That's where you got to go. That's the beginning place. That's the place you need to go. Hey, God, why did you create Michelle? I don't like her. What am I evidencing? I'm evidencing the absence of agape. And if we don't know how to minister to one another, love on one another, how in the world can we minister to a world that they ain't thinking about coming to church? How do we do that? I love this about Jesus. He says, when you pray, don't pray like them. When you fast, don't fast like them. I'm trying to draw one thing out of that. He says, when you pray, go into your secret place. You know why he wants it in the secret place? This is just a, a one thought anyway. There are many different kinds of thoughts. But he wants us in the secret place because when he unmasks us, He, he just want to be you and him. Yes. He, he doesn't want direct. So if he unmasked me in front of all y'all, it would be horrible. So he said, Harold, get in the closet, me and you, and let me deal with you. Capture this now. The first level of ministry is to yourself. It's me. When, when I prepare the message... Lord Jesus, it's always me. When I'm studying and researching, God don't say, make sure Anthony knows this. No, he says, you know what? You need to model this. And then I have to answer this question. Okay, if I got to model this, what I got to get rid of so I can be a pure model? Nobody, when this thing is wrapped up and over, nobody can, would be able to stand in front of God and say, you didn't give me a chance. Right. 
And so out there, you may be the initial Bible that a person reads. What story are they getting when they read you? I, I, I have to ask myself this question. You know, I golf. So golf season is coming. Hallelujah. And I golf with a lot of unsaved people. I do. But I recognize it ain't just about me golfing. I need to model. There are times when I'm golfing, when, when, when guys find out who I am, because when I introduce myself, I'm, I, I introduce myself like this, hi, my name is Harold. I don't say I'm bishop. And the reason lo- most of them find out I'm bishop, because of the guys that I golf with. We be golfing, and Jason will say something like, hey, bishop. I'll be wanting to say, that's my name. <laughs> And I answer him. So they recognize in a long, as we're going through the the round of golf, people who are talking in a certain way, you start to see it shift. I can't count the number of guys said to me, oh, I'm I'm sorry. And, And what I try to do is make them comfortable. Oh, it's okay. See, because I know that because you ain't redeemed that you're going to be consistent. So when we get to hole number 15 and you mess up, you're going to do it again. I know that. I'm not going to penalize you for that. Because I was the same way. And think about the people that had to put up with you when you were in your infancy in the things of God. When you didn't know better. People had to walk with you in that. So only a church that is effective in itself, with itself, can be effective with a community that God wants to transform. So it begins with me. It begins with you. So we got to capture again the go ye, the go you, etc. Uh, turn to this verse. We'll wrap up with this. Ephesians, give me Ephesians 6 and 18. Let's wrap up with this. And, and I repent before everybody in this, in this house because I have, not, I, I have not managed this well. I, I haven't managed this, this well, and I'll try to make that clear with you. With the understanding that I can't make anybody do anything here, number one. But when I know what God has given us to do and what he has said to build and I move away from it, it it would never be the body's fault, it becomes the leader's fault. I've gotten relaxed, I got relaxed. I'm repenting in front of everybody. Yeah, I I just got to the point where, and it's unfortunate that sometimes when you lead a, a group of people, you get frustrated because there's not the response that you really know should be. And you just say, okay, forget it. Anybody ever did that, in, in, by the way, where you just like, forget it. And then what people will do with you is that when you try to push the agenda, they will, they will claim you fussing at them. I mean, you go through all of that. I, I wish you all could just live in my heart for about a week or so and, and experience it. Especially when you know you're assigned to do something. I'm, I'm supposed to do this. And you crying out to God, you fasting. And then sometimes you get better response from people that don't know God than people who do. Some of the most nicest things that ever happened to me have happened to me with people who didn't know Jesus. But said, I said, I just feel I should do this for you. It's a real world. I, I, I just uh, help us, trying to help us understand. We got to wake up. Your brain, your brain says, get up and walk. Right? You know you got to go to another spot, so your brain says, get up and walk. 
when the benediction is over and we'll all be standing, I'll say, okay, let's stand for our benediction. N notice how that went. You see how quick that went? Or somebody stands up and say, okay, everybody stand. On the count of three, we're going to do it right here as an example. On the count of three. One, two, three, everybody stand. Okay, I, now y'all sit down. Here's my question. Why did we stand? What, what, why, why, why did everybody stand? Because someone announced to us to do something, right? And, and because you were able to process what was said, the only way you didn't stand is if, you know, there's some, I don't want to try to go through all that, but maybe you didn't hear it, etc. But because you heard it, and because someone was in front of you, and it's not just me, Elder Howard can say, stand. I, I marvel at him when he says, some people come on down here and worship with us. I marvel at that. Because we rarely do it. And, and, and this is the way I process. I don't know how you process stuff. I process stuff through the word. So when I hear that, I say, huh. Here's an example for you. We talked about it yesterday. Naaman the Syrian wants to be healed. Let me process it with you. This man is sick. He want to be healed. So, so he gets information that, hey, there's a prophet over there. If you, if you go talk to him, he can help you. I'm paraphrasing. Naaman goes to the prophet to be healed, and the prophet, this is the deal. The prophet didn't even waste time getting up. Now, Naaman is bothered. So you can be so bothered with the instruction that you end up missing the blessing because you can't wrap your mind around the process or the instruction. And in my experience, and I know some people can verify that, there have been times God told me to do something. I just said, that don't make sense. And you got to do this, but you say it, Lord. He comes to Naaman, Naaman says, he I mean, the prophet is just doing his thing. Hey, go down there and dip, dip three times in the Jordan. Just three. Watch this. Not four. Not two. Three times in the Jordan. Name and say, hold on. Hold, bro. Wait, 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 wait. Jordan is muddy. Now, find yourself in this. No, Jordan is muddy, and, and, and I, I'm not even thinking about dipping in that. We got all these beautiful uh, Cancun beaches. <laughs> Cozumel. We can scuba dive. We can see clearly under the water. We got all of that, and you want me to go dip in that? So we've got to shift how we think about things and we've got to be a people that are attentive to what the brain is telling us. So the brain says, it's a new season. And I need to change that. Let me say it this way. The, the, the big brain gives it to the little brain. And the little brain says it to the, 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 the many brains. <laughs> and now what has to happen is Collectively, we have to execute what the big brain said, even though we don't know how this is going to work out. Because God will never tell you all the detail. I am not lying. If God had told me all this stuff that I've been dealing with over 30 years, I'd have been like, you know what? Maybe you need to pick somebody else because I don't want to deal with that. How many people got some I don't want to deal with that? So when you were born, he don't tell you that. I mean, Erica, what would you have done had God told you, uh, you know, when you was a baby born, said you're going to have to deal with HIV. If you, what would you have done? You would have rewrote that story. And the problem with you re rewriting that story, your story and his story don't match always. It's really his story. 
Ephesians. Okay, let's wrap up with this so we can get out of here. Praise God. So, before I read the verse, prayer is multifaceted. Prayer is multifaceted. Now, now here's what the verse says. With all prayer, in fact, uh, let's read it together. Is that all right? Can everybody see the screen? Oh, you got it? On the count of three, let's read this together. One, two, three. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Oh, my God. That is, that is rich with revelation. And I'll just give you a little bit of it. Prayer is multifaceted. Prayer involves everything from the moment you are born until the day you die. And I can kind of help you with that. So the moment you are born, prayer about you becomes or is the responsibility of the person who had you. Something wrong with a Christian parent who won't cover their children in this crazy world. Now let's go to the next phase of that. As a parent, you are responsible to teach your children how to pray. Because there's going to be some moments when they're not going to be around you. Will they know how to came on, call on the name of the Lord? Mm -hmm. See, death ain't prejudice either. No, you give it a, you give it a break, it, it'll try to take you out of here. Let me read it to you in another version. It says this, pray at all times. On every occasion, in every season, mm -hmm. in the spirit. I place emphasis in the spirit because what we need is we need spirit-filled believers praying like never before. With all manner of prayer and entreaty, to that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding on behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. So, this verse is about warfare. So, so my question, God, why are you putting scriptures in, in, in the Bible about warfare if we ain't at war? Why, 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 why are you telling me to, to do this? Now, uh, all prayer, as multifaceted as it is, is preceded by putting on armor. The reason sometimes we can't last in prayer, we're not dressed with the proper attire. And we're trying to fight a spiritual war without being dressed, which makes us fleshly. And, and you can't win in your flesh. So, so before, notice if you read Ephesians 6, 10 down through to 18, notice what he talks about first. He talks about armor. Soldiers don't go to war without proper attire. Recently, uh, uh, I don't know when I, when I watched it, but probably a couple of months ago, I watched The Woman King. Anybody ever saw it? I fell in love with that movie. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Warriors like war stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a warrior. 
See, I, 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 you know, I ain't scared of the devil. I'm not. I'm a warrior. And, and one of the things that was so very interesting to me as, as you go through that whole story, Viola Davis has had this baby that was given away, so to speak. This baby somehow ends up back with her. She don't know it's her baby. But this baby has, has such a strong desire to be one of the Awojes. That's the military group of, of uh, Dahomey. Am I right? Did I get it right? I think if I remember correct, she was, what, 18, 19? But already in her, she wants to be a warrior. She don't know that she's getting ready to be trained by her mama. So what does that mean? That means warriors have to be trained. And so as the person who is training you, what I'm first telling you is get dressed. And maybe that's why you don't come to prayer because you ain't dressed. I'm just being personal about my life. My prayer life has went up. Because I read that, I said, shoot, I got to pray more. I'm not talking about no Father in the name of Jesus, bless this day. Thank you for waking up this morning. May I have a good day in Jesus' name, amen. I'm not talking about that kind of praying because that ain't getting it. I mentioned it last week. Uh, did I mention it last week? The person that shot up the school in Tennessee. That's a demon. And what's bad about that is church folk are scared to call a demon a demon. Oh, you got psychological problems. No, you got a devil. Anytime you would be a part of something, grow up 20-some years later, go back to the school and shoot three kids with an assault rifle that will literally rip the kids' bodies apart and then kill the pastor and kill two other folk, you got a demon. Yes, yes. And it was a Christian school. I hang my hat on this. I do. I'm wrapping it up. God does nothing in the earth without first telling the prophets. Amen. We got to speak up. The devil is silencing our voice. He's making us ashamed to be who we are in, in God. So you got to get dressed first. A helmet. You need a helmet. To do this, you got to have a helmet. You need... You, why? Because you, you want to protect against a headshot. In Endgame, uh, Thanos, <laughs> oh my God, uh, the God of Thunder, what's his name? Thor, Thor cuts off Thanos' arm. And Thanos, pretty much he's just like, listen, laughing in your face. You should have went for the head. And that, the same, that same analogy works in ministry. Put on a helmet before you pray. You need a breastplate. You need, you, you need a belt. You need a sword. You need a shield. You need on shoes. Because you have entered into a spiritual dimension where demonic spirits will come on the attack and you got to be able to persevere in it, yes. stick with it, and pray it through. Yes. 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 I, Reverend Belinda told me this story. It wasn't one of the story, but an actual account where she was praying for somebody that she didn't even know. And she ended up, this person was in prison. And she ended up in that prison with that person. And the person was beginning to think about suicide. And, and, and God, God called her to do it. Not a family member, somebody that she didn't even know. And she went into some serious warfare on behalf of that person in the prison. But she had to persevere. You had, am I right? You had to stick with it. Because had she gave up because she is tired and she wasn't dressed, 
that person was going to kill themselves. See, that's how significant prayer is, and we just don't know that because we've got to open ourselves up to the things of God more. And she hung in there until that depressed spirit, that spirit of depression left. So we got to change how we think. So get dressed first, and then we can step into multifaceted praying. So, So I'm not in any degree trying to make anybody do anything. But going forward, I got to stick with the agenda of God. Because in order to transform the community, it must be preceded with intense intercession. We got to go, we got to go after demonic spirits in this area. Uproot them. Deal with religious spirits. See, going to church don't make you saved. No, you got to have a relationship. And when that relationship comes, you got you to develop that relationship. You got to work through things. You got to work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. We got to do all of that stuff. How many people really want to go to heaven? Let me, let me ask you this. And I, I probably got to do a teaching on this. How many people do you expect to get a reward in heaven? Heaven has rewards. It's in the Bible. And just because you go to abundant life don't mean you're going to get a reward that another person gets because you may should be a person that's come to church on Sunday. There are rewards. Anybody ever got a promotion on your job? How did you get it? You impressed. Oh, my God. You impressed the boss. And, and check it out. Sometimes you weren't even trying to be promoted. But you was just doing the work. Kingdom of God is like that. Hallelujah. Today is Palm Sunday. The day of Jesus' triumphal entry. And I want you to know that we're still winners. Just touch yourself and say, I'm still a winner. I'm still a winner. Tell your neighbor, you are still a winner. Your circumstances do not dictate your outcome. Praise God. Take a moment by your head real quick. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we just thank you. Hmm. Well, welcome back, everyone, to another presentation of the life. We've come to the conclusion, and so we hope and pray that it has enriched your life. Please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and visit us on our website, alccministry.com.